Hello, and welcome to Steph Rudol. I am, inexplicably, Steph. Ah, uh, remember Borealis? I'm guessing you probably do, because he's the most popular boy, being my most popular video to date. Probably many of you found me via his video. I made him for the Winter Court collab hosted by Vander Craft on Instagram. Katarina is hosting another collab, Summer Court this time. Think a fantasy royal court event at a desert palace. Please make sure to head on over to Instagram to see all the amazing dolls made for this collab. Links will be in the description. And while you're here, if you could do me a solid and like, comment, share, subscribe, I would really appreciate it from the bottom of my little heart. I'll be making a fawn this time. And as a disclaimer, I was working on multiple parts of the doll at the same time, so there will probably be a bit of jumping around and some continuity errors, but I've done my best to put all the footage in an order that will make some sort of sense. So let's get started. As with Borealis, I'll be using a BTS doll for my base. It's RM this time. But I'll need an extra joint for his leg mods, so I'll be borrowing the double knee joints from this BMR 1959 Ken. He has a very loose upper thigh joint, as you can see, so I don't feel too bad cutting his legs off. And I do have plans for his upper body later down the line, so don't worry, you will see him again. <laughs> Before we get to modding, I need to take some time to remind you that I'll be using power tools and dangerous sealants, that sort of thing, so it's important to take all of the proper safety precautions, like wearing earplugs, safety glasses, and a chalky mask to protect me from dust and fumes later when I use Mr. Super Clear. As you should too if you do this kind of work. Also be an adult, this kind of stuff ain't for kids. Now let's get to the plastic surgery. First I work on removing the Ken's legs, then RM's. I hold the Ken's legs up to RM's to determine where I want to cut below the knee before I do it. You know, measure twice, cut once. I cut RM's legs below the knee as well, as I'll be using them as the lower leg joint. I also remove a portion of the shin and trim the toes and heels off of the BTS feet so that I'll be able to make them into hooves later. I'll be reconstructing the legs, sort of like this. Before I continue on the body, I use my hairdryer to soften the vinyl and remove the head, setting it aside for later. To put the leg pieces back together, I drill holes and insert sections of bamboo skewer along with some super glue. The bottom of the BTS knee joints are hollow, so I first fill them with epoxy sculpt and press the lower leg bamboo skewer into it, leaving an impression. Once cured, I can then glue the pieces in place and they'll stick together perfectly. I got myself a new glue gun, folks, so I'll be using hot glue to fill in the areas where pieces attach. When dry, I use my craft knife to whittle away any excess material before I So, let's talk about safety again. While I was trimming that hot glue, my knife slipped and I ended up cutting off the tip of my thumb. Two trips to Annie, that's the ER, my American friends, and I was left with this. So I had to take a little time off and do things I could do mostly one-handed. I ended up working on yarn wefts for his hair and legs using these three colors. It was a lot more tedious than normal, but it was at least something I could do. Be careful with craft knives, folks! Once I'd healed up enough, I used my Dremel again to cut down the feet a little more and to sand off the molded undies and factory markings on his back. Now it's properly time for a epoxy sculpt. I mix equal parts A and B thoroughly and get to work. First I add clay to reinforce the areas that I've glued together. After some sanding, I can go back in and work on shaping it and smoothing it to make the pieces blend together. I 
I also sculpt his hooves, first building up the shape and then refining it on later passes. I color in the joints as well as I can using a brown sharpie. Alas, it was a bit dry so it did not work very well. I ended up using an alcohol marker to fill in. It's not great, but it'll do. Then I paint his legs brown with acrylic paint, using thin coats and avoiding the joints where possible. I paint his hooves metallic black. I let it completely dry over a few days and then added a layer of Liquitex matte varnish. While that's drying, let's work on the head! I removed his factory hair and face off camera so it's all clean and ready to go. And it's time to use the craft knife for the first time since the incident. I carefully remove the human ears, making sure to cut away from myself. I'll be giving him magnetic horns and ears, so I first mark where I want his horns to be, and then I glue some 6mm neodymium magnets in pairs to the sides and top of his head. I actually ran into a lot of trouble with these magnets, most of which I'll probably cut for time, but they work out in the end. I removed the extra magnets and painted his scalp brown. And then I had the brilliant idea to cover his head in cling film to sculpt the ears and horns, using a bit of craft foam to give a wider base for the horns, sort of standing in place for where the hair will be later. This was... kind of a mistake? <laughs> I ended up ripping up two of the magnets on the head. So please ignore the weird ear bits, I completely remake them later. For the horns, I covered the corresponding magnets in epoxy and placed them on the head so they'd be the right polarity. Once cured, I embedded some wires I twisted together for strength to act as an armature. After that cured, I bent the wires into the shape I want for the horns, then add some clay to fill them out. Once I've got a decent shape going, I removed the horns from the head to work on them separately. This is when I had to reattach a couple of the magnets. I then cover the magnets on the head with a little bit of epoxy to sort of ensure they stay in place. Uh, that will definitely not be a problem later. It will be a problem later. For the ears, I encased the magnets in epoxy sculpt and sanded them down into little puck shapes after they cured. I sculpted the ears themselves out of silk clay and let them dry overnight. Then I trimmed a small piece off to make a flat surface so I could super glue the silk clay ears to the magnet pucks. I did this with the magnets on the head so that I made sure I glued them the right way around. Then I used more epoxy to blend everything together. I also added a final layer of clay to the horns and added texture. I primed the ears and horns with grey gesso to prepare them for painting later. While that dries, let's work on the face up. I prepped the head with two sprays of Mr. Super Clear beforehand, waiting about 30 minutes for each layer to dry. As usual, I start by sketching out the eye shape with a watercolor pencil that's just a bit darker than the skin tone. I'm using a sort of neutral pink color here. Then I begin blushing with chalk pastels, as I'll need to build it up over several layers. I build up the colors, layer by layer, giving him a new coat of MSC every so often when I need to.
I specifically picked RM's face mold for this project because of his dimple and slight smile. I want this character to look sweet, but mischievous. So I'll give him a bit of a raised eyebrow and a cheeky smirk. To make his freckles, I wet the tip of a light brown watercolor pencil with a lot of water, and then I picked up the pigment with a brush and speckled it randomly across his cheeks and nose, before dabbing off the excess water. This left him with fairly natural looking freckles, especially after layering the effect a few times. I also used my light and dark brown pencils to add a few darker spots here and there to add depth. I used three different Pearl X powders this time, sparkle gold over his whole face, rose gold on his cheeks and nose, and blue russet focused around his temples. I added a few layers of these, and I think those paired with the freckles look amazing.
I finish off with two coats of MSC to seal everything in. With the face up done, now I can match his face with his body, his upper body anyway. I gave his body a couple of coats of Mr. Super Clear to start as well. Then I blushed him using the same pastels I used for his face, added freckles on his back, chest, shoulders, and arms, and then added the same trio of Perlex powders before sealing it all in with two final coats of MSC. And now I can reunite head and body with the assistance of my trusty hair dryer. I paint the horns with a metallic black and give his hooves a touch up as well while I'm at it. And I paint his ears brown. Then I dry brush the horns and hooves with brown and gold. To bring out the details in the horns further, I add back in a metallic black wash to the crevices and add some gold highlights to some of the ridges. I painted the inside of the ears with a mix of pearl red and pink, and Vallejo gloss varnish to his hooves, lips, eyes, and horns. Time to flock! I made the flock myself by cutting yarn fluff left over from making wefts into teeny tiny pieces. I spread glue on the areas I want to make fuzzy, then I press the flock on and let it dry. The next day, I can brush off the excess with a toothbrush. Since I didn't get full coverage the first time, I repeated the process in the areas that seemed a bit bare. Off camera, I curled the yarn wefts I made for his hair using my hair straightener and a metal chopstick. I start gluing them around his head starting at the nape of his neck and working up. Then I can start gluing the straight wefts to his legs. I work my way around layer by layer and trim them with an eyebrow razor as I go along, though not as much as I should have. There was a lot of trimming layer. <laughs> And while I was doing this, I realized I hated his hair. <laughs> it looked weird. And his horns barely stick anymore. And to make the part work, I had piled hair on top of hair and it just, oh, it was a mess. So I decided the only thing to do was to remove all of the wefts from the crown of his head, pry off the epoxy encased magnets, glue on new magnets, and attach new wefts directly over the top in a slightly different arrangement, curling as I went after I glued them on so that the part wouldn't look weird. This was fairly difficult to do because I had to sort of angle the chopstick and hold that while I used my hair straightener and um, I did most of it off camera because it would have been impossible for you all to see. <laughs> But look at how much better he looks. 
and his horns stay on perfectly, so much better. Now back to the legs. This took far longer than I realized it would. And I ended up having to make a bunch more wefts because even though I had made more than I thought I'd need because I knew I would underestimate it, I still underestimated it. Once I got to the top, I thought I'd try gluing the yarn fiber directly on to make a more natural transition as I have seen many adult artists do. But I'm very bad at it. <laughs> and I got frustrated because it did not look good. Uh, so I ended up just gluing a final round of wefts with the glue section cut as small as possible and adding a layer of flocking to hide the edges to make it look a little more natural and I think that came out a lot better. <laughs> I wasn't really sure what to do about clothing, but since he's meant to be attending a court event, he should be wearing something. So I decided on making him a harness out of thin green ribbon and gold jump rings. I also made him this floaty wrap out of fabric from a shirt I got at a charity shop and some of the same green ribbon I used for his harness and gold embroidery thread. And with that, he is done. I decided to call him Frey, after the Norse god Freyr, who is, among other things, a god associated with sunshine. Making Frey was quite the journey, blood sacrifice and all, but I really love how he turned out. And I think he and Borealis definitely have sort of a lovers to friends vibe. Borealis is definitely more aloof and dramatic and doesn't stray far from home. Well, I see Frey as much more gregarious and mischievous with a dash of wanderlust. What do you think of Frey? And where would you go on an adventure if you had the chance? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you want to see more from me, and click the bell icon to receive a notification every time I post a new video. Please also head on over to Instagram where you can follow me at Stefudol, and also check out all of the amazing dolls for this collab. As I said at the beginning of the video, links are in the description below. Until next time, bye!